good morning. We're here on a icy Illinois February morning, and the only reason I mention that is because the heaters are running in the hangar and it's going to be hard to hear me, so I'll try and talk loudly. We're going to be installing some access panels on a Piper PA-28. Now, you're probably watching this because the FAA has issued an AD that says you have to comply with a service bulletin which says you must install a service kit. So following that as far as we go, basically what it means is we have to make a big hole in a perfectly good airplane. And anytime we make a big hole in a perfectly good airplane, if you have any a half a grain of sense, you get really, really nervous. So in this video, we're going to install the service kit. We're gonna be installing these access panels by cutting a hole in the airplane. And we're gonna do it very, very slowly, deliberately, and carefully. Now, there is another service kit that we're also going to be installing. And this is service bulletin 977, which allows us to inspect the wing root fittings from the inside of the rear baggage. That's not been installed on this airplane either, so we're going to go ahead and get both of them at the same time. Our first service bulletin deals with a stress skin covering, so it's going to be involved installing a doubler and then installing a uh, access panel. The second service bulletin is a non-stressed wing skin, so it's merely going to involve cutting a hole and then putting a cover over the top with clip nuts. Both of those are things that make a person nervous, however, and so we are going to be following these templates. And these are templates that I've already cut out by looking at the instructions, making all the measurements, and these have been CNC machines to keep our power nibbler from doing any damage to the airplane and only removing the material that we want it to remove. At the same time that we did that, we also I also went ahead and I cut in guide holes so it's going to allow us to drill all of our holes perfectly. Let me introduce you to the power nibbler. Uh, I have a friend who's referred to this as a pissed off drunken beaver um, and it grabs a hold of chunks and removes them and it's going to be spraying aluminum things everywhere. Uh, it cuts and it cuts really really well and is hard to control and that's the reason for the CNC cut templates. I do need to caution you that not all of these nibblers are exactly the same size. So on my particular set of templates, I've measured the cutting mandrel and I've measured the guide and I have machined these templates taking into account the fact that this will not cut exactly up to the edge of the template. So the template is left a little larger than what it is. So if you were to get a hold of one of these templates and try and cut it with say a router bit, that has a guide on it, it would not come out correctly. You need to make sure that you have the proper dimensions across here. And I'll put that in the instructions, uh, what those dimensions should be to make sure that everything comes out. Okay, so I wanna talk about the tools we're going to need. And I also wanna talk about the fact that I'm getting ready to do this on an old uh, SESTA stabilizer, just to A, demonstrate, and B, check for myself that all of this works perfectly because I'm always nervous, uh, as is any sane individual, when it comes time to cut a massive hole into a already flying and in good condition airplane. What we're going to need, we're going to need the Piper Service Kit 765-196 with its uh, attendant parts, that includes the doublers and covers. We're going to need the pre-machined uh, template, which is available from my website. I'll post the link to that. We're going to need tools, including our nibbler, uh, of course, a drill, a number 30 and a number 40 drill bit, Clico pliers, and lots of silver Clicos to do our work. And that should cover what we need. Uh, the first thing we want to do is determine where the cover needs to go. And the template, uh, the packet tells us how to find the cover and uh, where to locate it. But since we're doing a test one, we're just going to go ahead and center it up on this open bay here. So we're going to make a set of crosshairs right where our axis panel is going to go. And uh, you would locate these crosshairs right in the center between the rib and the, in the uh, portion indicated by Piper. Now our next job 
is to center up our template right on this location. So if you look closely, you can see there's a little drill mark on each side of the template, and that lines up exactly with our crosshairs to help us get everything aligned and properly stationed. Now we're going to use our number 40 drill bit for a 3 30 seconds inch hole. We'll drill through the template and install a Clico. That should locate our template where it needs to be. And we're just going to go ahead and pop the four corners, pop Clicos in the four corners so that they can't move. The next thing we need to do is drill a starter hole so we can begin with the nibbler. And to use the starter hole, I'm going to have to use a unibit or something else that will make that hole. And so I'm just going to use my unibit and make my starter hole. And remove all the chips because that would keep me from getting all the way up to the edge. And we are ready to introduce our nibbler. Now it's a little complicated on using the nibbler, but you'll get the hang really quick. Uh, all we're gonna do is move along and it's gonna cut. You'll notice it makes a pretty jaggy edge and it's really hard to control what direction it moves. And that's what the template is there for. So we're gonna get up to the edge of the template. and we're going to follow the edge of the template. Now one of the things I want you to notice is the Clicos got in my way uh, for going all the way around the edge, and that was expected, but at this point, I can install the Clicos from the inside. And now I can clean up those edges. Also notice how clean this area is where I followed exactly on the template, and how dirty it is where I didn't. But no problems, we can fix that. And at this point, a few strokes with a file, and we will have our complete, finished hole. Now you may be wondering why I didn't drill all of the holes at this point, and that's because I prefer to match drill them along with the final plate when we're ready to go. I've got to clean these edges up so they don't leave little nicks on my hands any more than that one is, and we should be ready to continue onward.
All right, once we filed it, your favorite type of deburring tool, this happens to be mine. It'll be quite useful to go around the edge. And we have created our custom opening. And it looks good. Now our next job is going to be to install the doubler onto this opening. So now we're ready to drill our next set of holes and our next set of holes can also be drilled with this template. We're going to temporarily fasten the template over the top of the doubler. And I'm going to use this little bitty C-clamp to do the job. You can use whatever you like to use for this sort of thing. I'm going to clamp this on on both sides. And now, I have the same drilling template that I drilled my first four holes with. This is going to allow me to drill the same four holes There's the same four holes in the uh, doubler as I already have drilled inside the, uh, the surface of the wing. So now we're ready to reinstall, this time the doubler and the Clecos, through the guide hole we just drilled. Four Clecos later, and all we have to do is punch our holes on through the skin. At this point, we are done with the guide. All we have to do is enlarge our holes to number four, dimple our holes, and squeeze our rivets. I would go ahead and dimple this and install this on our uh, stabilizer, but I need this part on the actual airplane, so I'm not actually going to counter uh, to dimple and set the rivets right now. I do want to check how well my piece actually fits because that's going to determine uh, whether or not we're going through with this process. So here we are. There is our cover in position. And you can see that everything looks good. There is a very slight gap in between our cover and our edge, as there should be. We have at least our two and a half D, which is what is required for us to have a legitimate rivet. It should be 5 16 on center, and it is 5 16 on center. So we are in good shape. This is a complete, correct axis panel. So here's our airplane we're about to uh, install this cover on and uh, we are going to do our best to show you what happens when we use the uh, when we do the work underneath but I don't know how good the video footage is going to show up.